Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin McDowell. I'm the art director for Total War at Creative Assembly. Today, I'm going to talk about leadership in the art department. Making great games needs good leadership. Becoming a lead can happen very quickly and, un and unexpectedly. So it's important to have the confidence to know that you know what it takes to be an effective lead. There's a few ways you can become lead. The most common is that your leads moved on um, and now, congratulations, you've been promoted. It's more than possible that there are others in your team that are more experienced than you, but for whatever reason, they don't want to become leads or maybe they're not suitable for a leadership role. The second most common way is that your team's expanding and more leads are required. So congratulations again, you've been promoted. Um, and finally, uh, another possibility is that your team is actually an organizational mess and that there's no lead in place. Uh, so you start doing it. And strangely, everybody seems to accept that. Congratulations, <laughs> you've promoted yourself. Do you now lead. Please make sure that you get a job title change and a pay rise. In all these cases, there's a good chance that you've not had any, any leadership training. Okay, but what if you are not interested in being a lead? It's true, many artists and coders for that matter prefer to improve their technical skills more than their organizational or business skills. Um, if your path is to be the best artist that you can be rather than being driven to make the best game that you can make, the path of technical excellence is probably the right one for you. Uh, but you should still learn the signs and ways of good leadership because your life is going to be a lot easier if you are working under the supervision of a um, good and talented lead. Um, and also you can help coach and direct your own lead as you, as you yourself gain more experience. Few of the well-known artists that you see on the in internet on ArtStation or Instagram um, are leads, uh, which has led to a lack of role models and understanding of the importance of team leadership within game development. When you're coming up as a student, it's hard to know. It's such an important part of game development, at least until you hit your first group project. I'll give you a bit of my backstory so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, lots of talks I've seen are mostly backstory and not much practical advice. So my apologies, please trust me, there will be lots of useful information to come. So I studied architecture in the early 1990s at the University of Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. I studied there for two years and then decided to drop out. It was a great design education uh, and part of the program was working in architecture studios. So I got a very early insight into the business of architecture. I saw all of the senior architects spending most of the day talking about, talking to material suppliers about the properties of materials and whether they conform to such and such a building code. Um, they looked extremely bored and I was horrified at the prospect of this being my career. Um, as the student intern there, it seemed to me that I had the best job designing uh, you know, designing buildings and designing details, um, making models, and it only seemed to get worse the more experienced you got. So I got cold feet about architecture and that's why I quit. And I built up my 2D portfolio and uh, started doing some freelance illustration work. Uh, this was all before the internet. Um, information was a scarce commodity. I was a gamer uh, living in Toronto and I used to read a British magazine called Edge. In the back of the magazine, there were ads for jobs and games. For me, that was a light bulb moment. That's what I wanted to do. At that time, this is about 1995, games were crossing a threshold um, where 3D art was becoming more and more important. So I did a crash course in 3D. There were only a few schools teaching these things in Canada at the time, uh, probably only three. Vancouver Film School, Sheridan College, uh, and this small academy in Toronto, which is where I went. I just wanted to have access to the software machines to put together a portfolio. At that time, those things were, were 
far too expensive for an individual to have. So you really had to be doing it at a school. I did well in the class and I took a, a position at the big game developer in Toronto called Grey Matter Games. I started there as an environment artist um, where my previous experience in architecture were use, was useful. Uh, to my surprise, there were three or four ex-architects working there. After three months, I was put on a speculative project and promoted to environment art lead, managing three artists. Two of those artists had 10 years of experience each, and one of them had five years of experience. I had three months of experience. Uh, it was strange, I suppose, but I'm a natural cat herder, uh, and they were more than happy to focus on the work rather than the design, managing, and organizing. And this is one of those cases that I was mentioning before where, uh, you know, quite a few experienced people don't actually want to be a lead. I worked there for a year, um, and I had wanted to go work in England. So I got a lucky break and got a job in Scotland, um, which was great as well. Uh, there was a company that I moved to that was, that was going to get a contract doing Formula 198 for Sony. Uh, and they were required by Sony to hire a lead artist who knew Soft Nimage, which was the 3D software that Sony was using back then. So I had two years of Soft Nimage experience, one at school and one at my, my job. So with one year of experience, I started working on my first AAA project for PlayStation as a lead artist with Sony as our publisher. Uh, consequently, I did a lot of things wrong. The leadership in other areas of that team were also quite experienced, so there wasn't really much leadership mentoring going on. Uh, crunch, toxicity, and disaffectation were on the team. I took too much personal responsibility for too many, too many areas of the game. I was too focused on content creation and not enough on developing the team. We did get the game out the door. It, had, it got mediocre reviews. I think averaging about 70%, but we did sell a million copies at least. Um, <clears throat> after that, I worked on F1 2000, which was for EA, uh, which I joined that project in progress and was lead FMV artist on it. Uh, that was a lot more fun because there were only two of us making the movies. We could manage our own schedule and we could watch the, the you know, the interactions of the team from the sidelines more or less. In March of 2000, I moved to Creative Assembly as a 3D artist on their team. There were about 30 people at CA when I started. After three months working at CA, I finished working on uh, some sports conversion, uh, which I think was Australian rules football, uh, and then started working on Rome Total War, where I was made lead artist after a few months of working on it. We had a team of about six. 20 years later, I'm art director for Total War. There are about 650 people at CA. The art team is well over 100. If we included all of the artists working on it, including contractors and at CA, CA Sophia, we're probably, probably at about 150. Um, I've shipped lots, lots of games at CA. None of our games have been canceled. Plenty have been late. Some have been better than others, but I'm proud of everyone that we've done. Let me tell you a few things that I've learned along the way. The first and most important thing is that leadership is a skill. You're learning how to be artists. You follow tutorials, you learn the fundamentals. Leadership's no different. You can educate yourself and you can learn what it takes to be an effective lead. Leadership is a universal skill. There's more information about it, about leadership than art. If you think that you're hopeless and have no aptitude for it, I uh, would like to invite you to think again. Get some books, study, learn. You know, before, see if it's see if it's for you. Don't dismiss it. Uh, there are uh, loads of different skills that you can learn about uh, to be an effective art lead. Public speaking, speech writing, copyright law. HR law and HR guidance, assertiveness training, I think is very important for many artists, creative writing, team management, team training. Uh, at some point I've studied all of these things. Um, and one example is that I learned creative writing because our cinematics team 
the cinematics team at work is is under my remit, remit, and I wanted to get a stronger grip on storytelling. So I read loads of books about writing and set myself a personal project to write a novel, which I did. And I learned a tremendous amount from doing that. Next thing to note, and I mean, this is kind of self-explanatory with the job title, but sometimes it's easy, easy to forget that creativity and vision is part of your job. And as an art lead, lead, you know, you would be expected to, from whichever background you come from, you would be expected to understand the art fundamentals, color, composition, lighting and shade, storytelling. Um, and also you have to put the onus on yourself to be a creative force within the team and to stand up for creativity within your team. Um, <clears throat> and in order to be able to set out that creative vision for your project, you need to have a wide range of knowledge and interests. Um, history, fantasy, science fiction, architecture, film, graphic design, fine art. Don't just play video games. You need to cross-pollinate your ideas in other ways. In fact, nature is the best thing, really, to, to study. Um, to be creative, you also must insist on a degree of freedom and and support and make sure that you have some non-critical time. People can't be creative if their ideas are constantly being scrutinized or shot down, you know, the minute that, they're, that the ideas pop up. Um, and I just want to give you an example of how this these sort of things can come into play. So I used to spend a lot of time scouring bookshops in London for Japanese woodblock prints, which I used to collect. Um, until I sold them all to renovate my house. Uh, and I've got quite a collection of books on Japanese wood woodblock prints. And I collect them because I love them and they're, they're fascinating window into the history of Japan. So we won a BAFTA for Shogun 2. And if I wasn't interested in Japanese woodblock, woodblock prints and Japanese art in general, I'm not sure that that would have happened. So keep wide set of interests. As a lead, uh, another thing that you really must focus on is recruitment. Being a lead is easiest when you've got a great team. And so recruitment, really, if you've got open hires, recruitment's gotta be your number one priority. There've been many times on my team when my area leads have told me that they're too busy to focus on recruitment. I'm quite a, a calm person, but that's gonna be one way to rile me up. You're not too busy to recruit. If you're too busy to recruit, then it makes sense that recruiting is your number one priority. Um, and when recruiting, be aware of personal bias. You're not looking to hire friends, but work colleagues. Don't bias your hiring towards people like you. Um, initially, when I was younger, I overemphasized hiring people for their skills over their so-called team fit. Uh, but, but for me now, skills are only half the issue. And the, the team fit's very important. And the sort of team fit that I'm looking for is, are people who are collaborative, responsible, enthusiastic, and interested in the games that we're making. Let's talk about scheduling, just briefly scheduling. So as a new lead, it's best to assume that everything will take three times longer than you think it will. Um, and you'll probably be about right. And if you think I'm joking, I am not joking. I'm absolutely not joking. Um, avoid scheduling with the notion of best case scenario uh, in mind. You've got to be thinking about worst case and you'll be on a better footing. It takes willpower to stand up to the production team with your estimates. You need, you, you need, to, you need to do that at the beginning. Otherwise, there will be pain at the end. What you should also do is track your scheduling over time to see how accurate you've been and use that information to help you manage future estimates. Also, as far as managing the production goes, don't let the team work on things that you think might get cut. Prioritize the work. Do the work on the vital items first, the stuff that must be in the game to ship. In fact, only do the vital work. If it's not vital, then, you know, why is it on the schedule? So prune the fluff from the schedule. But you also need some mechanism for keeping buffer in the schedule. 
So actually keep the fluff. Keep the fluff in the schedule. That's your buffer. If you're, if, if everybody is scheduled to the hilt with vital work, then you're going to be in a dangerous place. Um, and then a fluff, you know, if you ever get to it, is nice polish for the game too. Crunch. Now, again, like, like I said before, I, I think the last time I did crunch was, was working on Formula One games. Um, and that was fruitless. So a few days of or- overtime here and there is not crunch. It won't hurt you. It won't hurt your team. If it's applied very specifically to target, you know, getting a, cer- a certain feature, a certain build done by a certain day, um, and it's very limited and there's an end, that's fine. Crunch is sustained and your team feels like they're required to do it. You're usually crunching because something has gone horribly wrong. So what, ha- what you need to, what the team needs to do is stop crunching and look at what the cause of the crunch is. Typically, it's either going to be because the schedule has been uh, underestimated uh, or the team's throwing work out because you've not verified the gameplay at the outset as a top priority. It's it's a game design process problem. Uh, And you've hit production too early. So the the problem for the... The the solution for these is not crunch. Uh, Crunch is stupid and fundamentally it doesn't actually work. The crunch will not save your game. So you have to sit back and look at the problems objectively and come up with a a plan to deal with them. Next point I want to talk about is um, being a coach as a lead, being a coach versus being a captain. So I just want you for a moment to put yourself um, in the situation of somebody that, that you're leading. So do you want to be led by somebody who's on the field trying to score the most goals or by somebody who is taking care of the key team, helping train them so they, they can be their best and not being the one that's, you know, out on the pitch focused on scoring the goals as a lead, you have to think how, how can you serve your team? You do have to direct them, but you're also your team's biggest servant. And so you have to unblock them and get them the software that they need and get them the training that they need, get them clear direction, help them manage conflicts with other um, team members and people outside of your initial team. Um, Our direction itself is about getting the big picture right. Our direction serves brand and serves the game design. It's not a self-serving thing. Um, As an art director, you must, and as a lead, you must trust your team to follow through with the details and don't don't micromanage. Um, Canny art direction can make your games cheaper and more fun. The the styles of games like Team Fortress and Fortnite epitomize this. Your work as a lead, your production work, that is the actual artwork that you do, is of secondary importance compared to making sure that your team is running efficiently. Delegate everything, except, you know, there are some things you can. Make sure to get yourself out of the critical path. That is, don't be the blocker that everybody's waiting for you to finish a certain piece of artwork. So yeah, don't be the lead that's too busy with important or difficult work to lead the team. If you have, sorry, I have this vision where this is my, this is my carrot and I'm the donkey where I can see myself with my feet up on the desk, sipping my coffee and everything's ticking away nicely. So that's what you want to aim for. You will never achieve it, but that's the goal is to make sure that your whole team is functioning, have everything that they need and the game's getting made. And the thing about your team is, and this is where, especially in our team, which, which is where herding cats comes in. Everybody's different, especially artists. You're not gonna change their personalities. Uh, But the one thing you can do is demand that people treat each other with respect. So you must learn about your team's goals and motivations. They can be quite different. Some are focused on sharing and helping others. Some live in a world of theoretical problem solving and excel at solving difficult technical issues. Uh, Some just want to get straight to the root of the problem as quickly as possible and drive forward as fast as possible. Build your team. Trust your team but also test them sometimes. 
Never hold people back or keep them down. Instead, build your team up as high as you can. They will get better than you at a lot of things. That's good. Developing team members to new heights shows true leadership. Consult your team. Bring them into decision making into the decision making process. Build up their skills. Have a personal development plan in mind for them, including skills and business experience. Confront difficult things swiftly and effectively. Toxicity spreads quickly, and a good leader will act decisively to protect the team. Look on those things. They can be quite stressful, those things, but look on them as growth opportunities for yourself as a leader. And don't be scared to ask for support. Confront the elephant in the room. Be the one to bring it up. Ask the hard questions. Manage underperforming employees. Act with integrity. Uh, And speaking of getting help, if you're feeling overwhelmed, ask for help. HR can help you with interpersonal interpersonal issues. Um, Your team can help you with art direction and design. Your job is to find the best solution or answer. The source of that solution or answer is not so important, but getting the best answer is. And don't feel obliged to provide answers instantly. I don't know. I'll find out and get back to you is often the best answer. The key part is actually do find out and do look into it and do get back to the person. At the bottom of it, leadership is about managing your team, using your skills and experience with integrity and foresight. And the last thing you have to do really is share your experience with your peers and your team and anybody else who will listen. Thank you. Uh, And special thanks from me to Chris Waller, who's our technical art director on Total War for helping me with the last three points. Thank you very much. 